Judge, jury, and executioner. Dale, as the well, say Dale could pass us all three. He's he's the executioner. He is judge, and he is the jury, isn't he? Aye. We've what got so many E's in there, but aye, we kick off the episode. Daryl is interrogating Randall. It's basically. Daryl battering the shit out of Randall and then he batters him and then it's like he asks all the questions. Yeah. He doesn't really like do it like a proper interrogation. He kind of just batters him. There's teeth flying out of Randall. You feel sorry for Randall here. I mean, if you're going to kill him, just fucking put him out of his misery. Like, why the hell's Daryl beating the shit out of him? And then um, Randall admits that there was people in his group one night. They, they found a guy and his two daughters and he's... I mean, he doesn't he doesn't specifically state what they done but he alludes to the fact maybe they raped the guy's daughters and, and made him watch and they didn't even kill him after that and then this seems to um, piss Daryl off even more and he's like but it wasn't me I wouldn't do anything like that and then the next minute Daryl starts punching him and it's like I don't understand like I mean you get you could argue Randall's being honest maybe but I don't know what he really thought saying that was going to get him like I mean exactly this is stupid it's almost like it's almost like to give him another reason to kill the guy, but Dale's never going to go away killing him. And then when Daryl comes back to the group, he says, like, oh, they'll kill, they'll kill us men and the women will wish they were dead, right? But, but that's not what Randall said. Randall says, like, Randall says they raped his daughters and, and let him watch. Exactly. So now, Daryl sounds... turns around to the group and says he's a part of a group that does stuff like that you know in this world like in wartime and shit like that and these sort of that's, that's just what happens what Daryl said he's just going with the gem like the way he described it now if he actually turns around and says here to the group here he's a part of a group who fucking do horrid shit like this surely that would be enough for Dale to understand it a bit more yes or no he can talk about his his fucking humanity and all this but if, if Randall is a part of a group that is capable of that surely this guy cannot be allowed to live Yes or no? I think so. I would say but so. But Daryl doesn't do a good job here. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He, he basically just, you know what I mean, he gives like the, the, the general fucking consensus of what, what happens in these sort of times. Interrogates him and then doesn't really let the group know what he found out, so. Yeah. You know, Dale opposes to it, walks off with Rick, basically says to Rick, right, we need to, we need to do this, we need to let him live. And then Rick's like, you, you heard the group, everyone's with me. And then Dale's like, aye, because we're all too scared. We're all too scared to voice their opinion. What if, right, well say they are too scared. That's not fucking Rick's fault, is it? Nope. I mean, like, out of the people that matter at this point, right, we've not really talked about it, but who really wants Randall to live? Apart from Dale? No one? No one. Everyone can wants Randall gone. Or on the fence. And if you're on the fence... And the, the majority is to kill him, then you're kind of just for the majority. Or else you'd speak up and be in the minority. Simple as fucking that. And then, we basically, this whole episode, we just get Dale going around them all. Doing a, a campaign program, trying to get them to switch from Rick and, like, Shane's side to his side. And is it happening? No. He's not really getting through to anybody. No one's really interested. He goes to, I think he goes to Andrea first, after Rick. But, I mean... He, he's already jobbed out, Andrew. Andrew wanted to die and then he fucking convinced her to live and then here she's guarding the the uh the wee, the wee shed that Randall's shed, in. Yeah, Dale says to Andrea, here, keep an eye on Randall until I can convince people to let him live. Don't let Shane kill him. What's his fucking hard on about Shane like? I, I mean I tell you what, see Shane here when Dale confronts him, he fucking Shane was pretty dead on about it. Yeah, Shane was like, here, if you can convince the group to let him live, I won't say anything. You know? Exactly. During all this, Carl... I mean, she, it was not, Shane didn't even fret. Shane's never threatened Dale, or... I mean, he's, all right, he did say... Uh, that one time, he says to him, if you think I would do that to Rick, what do you think I'd do to someone like you? That's what he'd like. But, I mean, I don't even... I didn't take that as a threat. I took that as a kind of... a point. You know? Um, even when he took the guns, like, he never threatened them. If anything, he was like, here, either give me the guns or just shoot me, Dale. I mean, he's never really threatened Dale. And here, he doesn't threaten him. He, he just basically says, look, you're wrong about this. And your decision's going to get somebody killed. Exactly. So. 110. 
percent here but aye that this sends Andrea to the shed Shane goes there but we also have Dale he goes to Daryl and before I forget him and Daryl are talking Daryl says he doesn't really give a shit what happens to him but that kind of I don't know like when when Randall revealed that stuff to Daryl Daryl got a bit more pissed and started booting him so Daryl doesn't give a shit that happens I don't believe that I think he's just saying that because he wants to he maybe doesn't want to piss off not to piss off Dale but kind of sit in the fence like you know and then they start talking about leadership about Shane and Rick Daryl says that the group is broken and that come on Dale I know I know Shane killed Otis he, he said oh, Otis covered him and he came back with his gun Dale asked Daryl did he admit it I mean <laughs> fuck of course not Daryl just put two and two together because he's not a fucking imbecile but what I get from this is Daryl is basically like I'd have done the same thing yeah, no, but I mean, again, if you actually watch it, Shane didn't, it's not like Shane was like, oh fuck, I need to kill this guy to save my life, that's not what, I mean, Shane fucking asked him to go on without him. Exactly. It was more Shane did it to save Carl, it wasn't like, it wasn't like Shane did it to save himself, again, like, no one really. He did it to save himself in order to save Carl. <laughs> yeah, but no one really mentions that, that Shane was willing to, he wanted Otis to go on without him. Yeah. So, again, it's like, whatever. <laughs> I know Dale's just, well I mean I guess Dale doesn't see that point, like Dale's just thinking damn it he shot the bastard. Daryl heads off to do something this episode, don't really know what he does until the group meet up, he just kind of fucks off. Yeah, um, he's been doing that though a lot lately. In the second half of the season Daryl's just kind of been cut off from the rest of the group. And T-Dog, I mean Dale doesn't even bother goes folk the fucking T-Dog, he, uh, like, he, just thinks, he just thinks the blacks are uneducated on folk Democrat. <laughs> In this episode, fucking Carl was annoying as fuck. Uh, first of all, he, he sneaked into the barn to speak to Randall. Uh, Shane burst through the barn and Shane's like pointing the gun at Randall. I mean, how how is it Randall's fault that Carl is a prick and has sneaked into the barn and is talking to him? I know. It's not like fucking Randall enticed him in or tried to uh, get him in and like let's ambush him or something or gain his... Tr I mean, Carl was the one that appeared there. And of course he's going to try and get fucking out, he's handcuffed. We have about fucking 20 different handcuffs. I mean, what, what else are you going to say to him? You know? Shane, could have pulled the trigger here, could have saved a lot of problems. Carl then storms, don't tell my mum and dad, don't tell my parents, don't tell my parents. And then like 13 seconds later, he runs into Carl, Carl's like, Carl, we're going to find Sophia in, in heaven. heaven one day, she's in a better place. And Carl's like, no she's not. Heaven ain't real, and if you believe it is, then you're an idiot. And he storms up. Listen, I agree with him, but fuck him. He's no, pissed. I fucking hate kid actors, man. Fuck, I, I think kids ruin everything. I, I, I can, I can almost accept the kids being in series as long as they're like silently there and just you just maybe see them in a, the odd scene. But kids should not be. The kids should not be the fucking main part. He's got shot and he's came back five years older. Well, the mindset of being five years older. It's like, I mean... It's ridiculous. Why I mean, did they have to copy the comics like that? Like at least in Sons of Anarchy. Like, I mean, at least Abel's not asked to do anything. And I would say Abel's a better actor than fucking Carl. And he's half the fucking age, Jim. But he's not... No, but, like, it's kind of like simple stuff that he's doing. It's almost like they want... They're trying to get Carl to... The guy's, like... Fuck, at this stage, I think he's, like, eight. What's the actor? Eight or nine here. Yeah. But it's almost like they're trying they want him to pull they want him to act like five years older than he actually is, and it just it just can't happen. I mean, don't get me wrong, you get some child actors that are pretty good, but this Chandler Riggs guy ain't one of them. No. Everything just comes across as forced. I mean look at Sophia, right? Sophia basically didn't get any fucking lines and she probably was a shit actress. But I'm not that's not a dig at Sophia because she was young and I don't expect people to be great. No, I mean you, I don't think he can be. Some, yeah, of course, yeah, some people are going to be better at an early age, but, I mean, you will never peak. I highly doubt there was an actor that peaked as a kid. Well, maybe the guy from Home Alone, like. But that's an exception. Sick Sam's kid as well. Uh, he's no bad. But you get my point. It's, it's very rare you get kid actors that are good. Carl was so fucking annoying this episode. Um, Rick could get... Laurie's like, it's okay, we'll talk about it. And Carol was like, Think no, about we'll it again. talk about it. I mean, again, it's like... Fucking Laurie, as long as her family's okay, she's willing to like downplay everything. And I know she's like laughing fucking about it. You know what? I actually respect Carol here for sticking up for herself. She says, 
you know what? I lost my daughter, but I didn't lose my mind. Because, like, Lloyd was trying to play down and stuff. Here, nothing happened. It's all right. Rick goes and speaks to Carl. Carl! It's fucking mad, like, that Laurie lasts shorter than Carl at this point, isn't it? Carl's fucking still going. I know. <laughs> um, Keep on rolling, baby. Uh, Rick says, hey, why would you speak back to Carl? Cor Carl. Uh, Carl say, fuck me, AC, trying to say Carl and Carl. The dishwasher and the fucking midget. The kid. <laughs> oh, um, Rick says, well, you shouldn't talk. You can't talk back to her. You need to listen more, not talk. And um, Car Carl goes... That's what mom says about you. <laughs> I mean, they're like, why doesn't... No, I, no, I honestly think Rick needed to do it. Right? Backslap him across I, the fucking and face we never, here. We've never seen it. But I think that's what this kid, this kid needed in season two. I think if Shane was his actual dad, I think he would have. Yeah, I think it would have. Like, or if Rick was dead. Even though well, maybe not if Rick was dead. Well, I don't know. Maybe if Rick was dead. Like, I mean... Um, okay, hopefully Harsha doesn't catch him. Get off my land! I know. I think that's slapped what, to the ass. No, I think that's what this kid needed. Like, yeah, he needed a fucking. He's fucking out of control. He's told to go in the house. Does he go in the house? No. He's to, actually he's told to go and apologize to Ka Carol. Does he do that? Then he's told to apologize to her. Then go and sit in the house. Doesn't do either of that. Storms off. Uh, takes a gun out of Daryl's bag. Pretends to ride his bike. Then goes in. To the woods where he encounters a, a, a walker. I mean, we know how dangerous these things are. Even though he's a kid, I mean, he's, he, he should know better than this. He's like throwing rocks at it. He's stuck in the mud. He's, he's ready to you know, pull the trigger. He's pointing the gun at it. Next thing it breaks free. He stumbles over, tries to grab him. He drops his gun and he runs off. Like, not only has he disturbed a walker and like he's led it essentially back to the, the farm I mean he's lost Daryl's gun like unlikely but what if Daryl's ever in a situation where he's on his bike and he gets surrounded and he's like right fuck it I'll go into my backpack here and get my gun and it's not there well, unless we pricks fucking hoover it off could easily get Daryl killed but he does get somebody killed anyway we get back um well what, what else happened I mean it, it, basically it's time to vote well you know Dale goes to Herschel I think that's the last person he goes to I actually think it was the first, but what did he think? No, it wasn't the first. Definitely wasn't the first. I think Shane's the last person he goes to. He doesn't go to T-Dog? No, no, I've already said that. Rick at the start, Andrea, Shane. He doesn't go to Glenn. I think he just assumes that Glenn's Aye. on his side. He doesn't go to anyone else in the farm apart from Herschel. He doesn't go to Laurie or guess Carl. No, guess no one in the farm's worthy of a fucking opinion. Doesn't go to Patricia, doesn't go to Maggie. But see, it's fucking embarrassing, right? I know you could say Herschel was there, gets it, right? But if Herschel's like a proper Christian and all that, surely... Yeah. Surely he would be... Like, he should be seeing where Dale's coming from. And he should be at least saying, Rick, there's no other way. But that's another thing. He fucking... Rick, think about it. Yeah, Rick, like, I thought, I thought about, about it. about it, Herschel. But think about it, Rick. Yeah, he, like, he, think about it again, he Rick. sits on the fence in such a shite bag way. He's like, I don't want that, that that piece of shit or scumbag around my daughters, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to decide. I'm going to let Rick do it. I'm just going to ignore what happens. Fucking own your shit. I know. I you mean, embarrassing I, bastard. You know what is great though? We we get into the sit down and like pretty much no one's got Dale side. And Dale's like, hey, it's a small number of us. Probably only me and Glenn. Then he looks at Glenn, and Glenn looks at him. And at this point, man, you cannot feel bad. You cannot not feel sorry for Dale. Like, like fucking Alvarez when he thought he had um, Hank's foot, and he just didn't have hee haw. <laughs> and then, um, so no one's agreeing with him. Um, Andrea's kind of like that changes her mind. I think just she feels sorry for Dale. She's like, no, no, I agree. But Dale's right. We can't kill this kid. Um, Dale, Dale's making the point that. Even if he does escape, there's 12 yards in one of them. But then Shane counters him with, yeah, what about when he brings his 30 guys back? <laughs> and Dale's point's just like, blown out the water. You got me. And then, then we get Carol. two and a half hours to think about it, Dale. <laughs> then we get Carol, who just points out, I'm sick of all the fighting. Do what you want, but don't ask me. Like, yeah, I, the, I forgot the, you the, kind the of The most useless man. cunt on this farm. The fucking... And then Dale fucking owns her, and he goes, "Yeah, you, you go and sleep in your tent and pretend that uh, that you didn't have a say, but say nothing's just as good as killing him." And I mean, and she didn't like it. 
I know. Seen a reaction to it. Fucker. But, but Dale, Dale was 100%. In this situation, Dale's right, right? I mean, by not saying anything, you are basically just agreeing to have this kid killed. Yeah, essentially, right? And another thing, I mentioned during the episode, I think, if we're being totally honest, I honestly think the people who wouldn't want him just killed would outnumber the people who would want him killed. But a lot of them are just too shite bag to say. We see Laurie mention the death penalty direct that she was not in favour of that stuff. Yeah, another thing, Laurie did not agree with it. Uh, Rick asked her multiple times and she gave like a shite bag answer. She kept saying, I back whatever you say. I mean, she'll give her blessing, Why right? Why can't she just say... To kill Shane, essentially. Yeah. But no, Randall, ha, ah, fucking keep him, let him live, but well, I'll why, still kill why, him. Why, why can't she even say, personally, if it was me, I wouldn't kill him, but I'll back whatever you go with? That's that's simple. That's all you have to fucking say. It's not hard. Yeah. You have to go, I would vote for, you know, keeping him alive, but I'll, I'll, I'll get you're the leader here. I'll, I'll back your decision. The like, guy think we're looking at basically the entire Green family, keeping him alive. Throw in Carl, Laurie and Dale, and you've got a fucking majority vote. It's as simple as that. And Andrea switches the deal. Yeah. So... so and Glenn, I think... That's what I'm saying, Dale, oh, I was including Glenn with Maggie. Yeah, um, Jimmy didn't get a fault, mustn't be And also, team. like, Maggie knew him as a kid, went to school with him, I mean, surely I should be like, fuck, you're killing one of my classmates, you know? Um, but, in my opinion, I was 100% on killing Randall, I, I, I just, what's the point of torture? And then, like, they're discussing, oh, let's keep him chained up, well, what, that's worse than fucking killing him. But is it not? Is that not worse than killing him? And even though he knows about Maggie, would he know where the farm is? Doesn't necessarily. I mean, listen, I went I went to school with a shitload of people. I could only tell you about where two or three of them live like. <laughs> well, you know, no, what I mean? but like, like we see later on in the show, right? No, else? but I mean like see the people you went to school with, do you know their address? Well, when you do a job like mine, you know a lot of people's addresses. No, right, but you get my point here. I mean, is it not possible that Randall did know Maggie, but he doesn't exactly, he couldn't pinpoint her farm? True, I know, but right, Unless right. he's been there. Or what, did they have a school day? Oh, let's, we're going to visit Maggie's farm for the day or something. like. I know, but listen to this, right? Later on in the show, spoiler alert, they keep Negan alive for the simple fact that, oh man, he's got to pay for his crimes, all this stuff, right? But yet here, we're like, we can't kill him because we're going to give him a fate worse than death, essentially. Mm -hmm. But here, it's like, oh, keeping them chained in the shed is a better form of life than... Dropping them off at the side of the fucking road, I mean... Ah, uh, I don't get it. Should have killed him. But you uh, know what? I get Dale's points. Dale's like, you know what? Jeffrey the Swan, or whatever the fuck he's called. It's Jeffrey the Mon or something like uh, you know Good what? actor. Good guy. Um, this was his MVP episode. Yeah. Walks out and goes... This group is broken, You're Darryl. right, Daryl. This group, this group is broken. So he walks off. We then get Daryl, Shane, and Rick. They lead, they, they lead Randall into like the barn. Uh, Rick asks him, do you want to stand or kneel? He doesn't, res Randall doesn't respond, so like Daryl takes his leg out and puts him on his knees anyway. Very nice see Daryl. The guy didn't respond if he wanted to kneel or... No, I, don't, I don't get this. It's, it, it just seems very cruel, like just dragging it fucking out. Beating the shit out of him. Could have just opened the, bar the, the shed door and fucking shot him. Aye. Didn't even need to drag him out here. F Rick, you should have just put a bullet in him. At the fucking bar. And all this would have been avoided. Or left him. He's fucking shooting at you. Yeah, see when his leg was impaled. Like I mean. You could argue just shooting him would have been the humane thing to do. Like. I know. And the guy's like early 20s. Man. Oh, he's just a kid. Fuck. You don't deserve any preferential treatment man. Fuck you. But no it's mad. It's almost like. Because this guy is like 21 or 22. Because right? Maggie's 22. I think he said he was a year below Maggie in school. So I say he's 21. This guy deserves... I'm not saying he's a bad... Like, we don't really know a lot about Randall. Personally, I don't think he's as, like, a saint as he's making it to be, right? Because I've already pointed out in previous episodes, like, the way he was taking down walkers and calling them bitch and stuff, and it looked like he was getting enjoyment out of, you know, like... Remember he had the knife and he was, like, you know, cut, like stabbing it? It seemed like he was excited about it whatever, you know? So, uh, I get bad vibes there, but it's, like... It's mad that Rick put so much effort into saving this guy because he was, like, 21, but, like... If he, let's say he was like 28 or something, they would have just left him stuck there and peeled. 
for eating by walkers. I know. But they left the fucking black guy. To get his face chewed off, like... I mean, I mean it's intriguing. Like, see this group randles on about it. Was this, like, the early beginning of the saviours? Could it have been? Could it have been? Well, we'll never know. Well, this we'll is the group Morales joined. Oh. Maybe they raped his daughters. Anyway, um, before Rick's about to shoot him in the barn, then he can't... I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he can't do it. He's just, like, hesitant. and that, I mean, that's fair enough, because he's about to murder somebody. This is murder, like. And then Carl walks in, Carl. Uh, and he's like, do it, Dad, do it. And it's like, this wee bastard fucking turns up. I mean... There's just no fucking need for him to say this, either. Like, Rick, yeah, he's doing it, mate. And Rick is like... like you're taking a shit, yeah, do it. Do it, Shane shit. fucking can't believe it. Shane, like, grabs him and fucking drags him at the barn. Like, what the hell are you doing? What is uh, that? What is that? You see what you're holding on to? I see who I'm holding on to. Anyway, I am I. Um, Rick's like, fuck, I can't do it. And then, and then he tells Daryl to take him away. Shane's pissed off, slams the door. We see Dale. Dale encounters like a cow that has had its guts ripped out, intestines ripped out. And I don't know if this is supposed to like mirror what happens like seconds later. But Dale turns around and he gets attacked by a walker. The walker jumps on top of him. And it's like, you're in an open fucking farm, Dale. I know it's late at night, but walkers don't crawl or nothing. You know I mean, it's not like they can sneak up on you. I'm a bit surprised. It's, he's out in the open. There's no, like, there's trees nearby where it just comes out. I thought it was a bit... I mean, I get you could say Dale was distracted by the cow or something like this, but... Yeah. I thought it was a bit unrealistic I mean, how it's like the jump on him. Yeah, and, like, it just overpowers him, like... Yeah. Fucking easily... He said to Glenn, if he, what, he's like 63 or something? Yeah, he's not old, old, like, you know, um, anyway, it overpowers him. He's trying to bite at his, like, neck, face, but he's, like, pushing its, pushing its shoulders up to stop it from biting him, and then it, like, kind of tears open his stomach a little bit, and then, like, a second later, it fucking just entirely, like, just rips his stomach open. This is fucking uh, brutal. Uh, Daryl then manages, he's the first one to get there. Everyone's trying to run to get him. Daryl's first to it. Tackles the so- zombie, sticks a knife in it. And then Daryl, like, look, he's like, oh, shit, we need help over here. Uh, that's, that's what pissed me off about this scene. Like, I mean, I know you can still don't know what's going on, right? But it's like, you hear someone screaming from afar. Like, it's afar, like. And, and Rick's like, oh, man, get Carl. And then, and then like, he tells Laura to get Carl. And then as soon as he goes, she goes, oh, go sip up the tent. Don't you not tell him to get into the house? Aye, house, lock the door. I sip up tent, lock the door. Fucking embarrassing, like. Why wouldn't she go in the house then? What could she anyway? No, she's, she's fucking, fucking useless. But yeah, and anyway, he doesn't go to the house because we fucking see him. No, well, he's there. She's, so anyway, he, fucking, he sees the zombie. They all get, they all get there. Um, Rick's like, oh shit, Dale. He's like, Herschel, we need Herschel. It's not the first time we've heard Rick shout, we need Herschel. Herschel gets there and he's like, ah, oh, should we move him into the house? And um, the, the Herschel's like, no, we won't make it. <laughs> and Rick's like, okay, we'll operate here. And Herschel's like, no. Nope, fuck it. Did it for your boy, I can't do it for this guy. And like, I just, I think if it's Carl lying here with his guts ripped out, I think Herschel at least attempts to save him. Again, I think it's more... Not enough room for two old bastards. Old man Dale! <laughs> you know, like, they're pretty quick to just not even fucking try and save Dale, like, just pretty much gave up on him. I know. Was there any way back for him, like, was he fucked? I'd say so, like. It was the fine line between damned if you do, damned if you don't like it. I think you've always got to at least try, though, no? I know, but you've got to run back to the fucking house, get all the supplies, get the fucking medicine, the the, the pills. Oh, fuck, I just let the second best character this season die, then. It's a hard choice. Hard choice. I'd have done everything in my power to save him. I was um, doing it, but I mean... But Herschel's not interested. He's like, nah, it's not worth it, Rick. Um, so the can everyone's crying. Rick then is going to try and shoot Dale to put him out of his misery. He can't really bring himself to do it. Uh, he couldn't really bring himself to shoot Randall either. I mean, he did shoot Dave and Tony, like, but I guess he was given no choice. And then the next minute we see a hand grab out. It takes the gun from Rick, and it's it's Daryl. He kneels down, points the gun at Dale. Dale like brings his head up towards the gun, almost like Dale's asking to be shot now. Daryl then says, sorry brother, and shoots him, and that's it, the screen fades it to black, that's the old deed. And while this was happening, we've seen Carl, um, Coral, Luke, Coral, 
Coral, look at the uh, the walker, and he finds out it was the walker that he was like tormenting earlier. So basically, him being. She ever admit to this? I can't remember. I don't think so. Him being out in the woods. I think he might actually like. I think season three, like season three, I missed it. Um. So yeah, essentially, he figures out that him tormenting that walker and playing with it and it breaking free led to the walker getting back to the farm and killing Dale and aye you fucked it right up so thanks a lot you wee snotty nose bastard it's safe to say a staff affected more or less everyone yeah even when Shane got there he was fucking you could see it on his face I, I don't I know I don't get this fucking whereas if Dale would probably be lying on the ground thinking I bet you're happy about this Shane no one to uh, you know stand up to you but I mean the fact where's your bag of guns Shane Shane looked annoyed, like, I mean, imagine, but again, hold on here, right? But imagine if Dale did hide the guns out in the woods, and then he got taken it. Fucking guns would be gone, and you wouldn't know where they are. Mm -hmm. And what's Darrow, he gonna, if he couldn't track Sophia, a moving person, how the fuck's he gonna track a, ba a bag of guns that ain't moving? <laughs> Fuck. Where's well, the guns? At least they're not guns! Ending up, at least they're not ending up a barn. Guns for you, you know, it's like, uh, Or maybe the barn's gonna end up in the guns. Aye. Um, anyway, that, that, I mean, that's pretty much it. Sad episode, sad to see Dale go. I mean, I think D Dale's one of my favourite To Walking Dead, he's easily, and I don't mean, like, to season two or whatever. I'm, I'm talking, like, all time. Dale's my top ten, like, easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, is it, is it a coincidence that people with the least episodes are better than the people who have lost very long? Yeah. Probably not. Uh, but the only thing is, I think season two... I think the 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 jump in season two into season three is like the mentality and like the life like towards the apocalypse and the walkers and humans in general. It changes so much that I think we actually miss out though on not getting to see Dale and Shane in at least season three. Yeah, and I'll be honest, there's so much it's fancies between season two and season three. It's like it's. And then I, I totally get Shane was ahead of his time. It's like an 18 miles out. Rick says to Shane, Stop pretending you know how this works. Well, I mean, fucking... He, he, he didn't... Up until you killed him, Ricky, he fucking did know how it worked. See another thing, right? It's like, see the whole, this whole way of how Dale died? We have se How many times have you seen in this show where there are zombies and talk to people and this never fucking harmed? I can't recall it once. Yep, but when the actor wants out, it happens. Frank Sarabont you're leaving well catch your ass I'm coming with you no but think of someone like Eugene fucking useless shite bag how's he still alive going into season 11 I don't know probably fucking survives the show but like yet yeah, Dale dies I mean a fucking Terraria World of Warcraft pl bastard pl winning surviving and here's Dale with his tummy ripped out his tummy what's going on I'm not I'm not even, I'm not looking forward to getting up to Fuck, I think, see once you get past too far going, like, we'll see all the characters they bring in. All boring, uh, one dimensional. I, I would say the only decent, the only, oh, there's a couple of decent characters, like, I mean, Negan's alright, Trevor's alright. At times, Abraham, I think, can be alright. But, I mean, apart from those three, like, I mean, you're see, fucking clutching, like, they name me a good character. Oh, Aaron, Jesus. Oh, fucking snowflake. And I've seen another way you gotta look at it, right? See see Randall here? See talk about like likability. I know he's just one guy. But fuck compare him to the rest of the group. Like he's still fucking low down. You bring in Negan, Stephen Ugg and all and all these bastards and they're fucking you're not supposed to like them, but yet they're like the best thing in the show. Yeah. Now if you truly like the survivors and all that, you wouldn't want them to fucking lose. I remember wanting these bastards to lose, but here we are guys, two episodes from the finale. And die. One major character death doing another one to go. And then Patricia, Jimmy, etc. And the gang. You know, I mean, just. <sighs> Ferry dragged out. I mean. Th this episode was basically Dale trying to get people to keep him alive. And then Dale ends up fucking dying. Um, yeah, so like good. what? See, now, like, I know you can say, oh, he saw Carl. He's like, oh, I don't want to shoot him for my boy. But the only guy really opposed it's dead. And essentially, the inaction to do it almost got, as basically, you could say, led to Dale's death. It made him storm off and shit. I mean... Why not just go and fucking put a bullet in Randall now, and that's it done? Some good dialogue and all this stuff. I'll get a seven. Personally... I didn't think there was too much boring shit in it. 
I think it's better than 18 miles out. I think it's got probably the saddest death. Up to this point, it's definitely the best death. Um, you know what? And I'd say... I'd say this is a death that probably affected the group the most out of the whole fucking show. Yeah, I don't name me anyone. I mean, we can talk about Abraham and Glenn, right? And everyone being traumatised. But that's because they all thought they were all each going to die, not because all fuck Abraham See, died. See, Sophia's death? I don't even think that was that bad. I think by the time we find her... In anyone smart was accepting she was dead and it was more of a holy fuck she's in the barn the whole time yeah <laughs> but yeah Dale guts hanging out in front of them he was like they all, I think they probably all felt sorry for him because he was the only guy for it I mean a lot of factors here Dale's dead I'll give it an 8 I liked it it was a nice wee farewell for Dale 7.5 we say goodbye to Dale um, tell you what I think Dale could be fine for the top spot when we rank uh, the season 2 characters Ah well, yeah. love deal. He'll be a clear second, like. Ah, he'll, he'll be close to second. He'll be, he'll right. be clear. He'll be fucking clear from first, like. But he'll be a clear second. Damn it! Unless he starts running to the barn. Running down a dream, down, down, down. Running. What is that? What, what is are you doing, with Randall? Leave Randall alone. <laughs> I wonder if Randall's second name's Keith. Randall Keyford. Anyway, that's it. Seven point five out of ten. Deals a man.